High dynamic range is, is basically is about real world lighting. So in the, in the real world you have lighting which ranges from, from starlight all the way up to bright sunshine. Maybe not in this country. Um, and the problem is with, with real world lighting up to now, camera technology simply hasn't been able to capture without, for example, the use of additional lighting. Um, and HDR, high dynamic range, it allows us for the first time to actually capture this data with camera technology, such as the one we have here. We can then manipulate it in, in post-production and then display it on special high dynamic range displays. And for the first time, you can actually see the full range of real world lighting on your laptop or on your television. Basically, with high dynamic range, if the human eye can see it, the camera can capture it. And that's the difference. Whereas before, with camera, traditional camera technology, you haven't been able to capture what the eye can see. You either have under or overexposed parts of a scene. At WMG, we have a unique HDR pipeline, all the way from capture, manipulate, to display. So the first thing we have to do is capture the data. We need these, these revolutionary cameras, which can say can capture 20 f-stops of lighting at 30 frames a second at full HD or high definition resolution. Uh, that then is compressed onto a device such as this, uh, which allows us to then actually manage it. We can then move it into some sort of post-production or for use in dynamic image-based lighting. Uh, and then from there, we can transfer it into these new HDR displays, uh, which allow you then to see the, world, the real world lighting. Basically, we've been doing high range research for, for a number of years. Uh, and we had the opportunity to build this camera. I think without this, this is the camera that has really made the step change because as I say we can do research but until you've got actually something to try it on and actually the technology to try it out and you can't really validate and verify your results. And I think that's the crucial thing. This camera is giving us the opportunity now to actually show that we can capture it. You know, the first time we've been able to do this. So we see here a comparison between a professional broadcast video camera and the high dynamic range video camera. In these extreme lighting conditions, uh, the normal broadcast camera is coping quite well until the, the person being interviewed starts to move and then you realize that the light is actually affecting has a major impact on what you're able to see at any point in time. Whereas with the high range video camera, because we're capturing all the exposures, we're able to compensate for that and produce an image which is a far enhanced ex viewing experience. This is not a product, um, but it's a prototype. We're able to get all the information. There are some issues, which we're technical issues, which we're addressing, but that's the nature of research. Um, but it really, in terms of, of the ability to capture something spontaneously, you don't need the lighting crew to come up to capture it. If you see something you want to film, you can just film it. You don't have to worry about the need for extra lighting. The problem with, the, with these cameras is that there's a price to be paid for capturing the real world lighting. And that's basically the amount of data. So the amount of data we're getting is 24 megabytes of frame. That means you've got 42 gigabytes for a minute of footage. So if you, manage, uh, you imagine your standard USB stick can hold eight gigabytes, uh, you need five of these just to hold a minute of, of footage. And so what we've been doing at WMG is working on uh, compression technology which allows us to make this manageable. So you can actually move data around, move this HDR data around on existing infrastructure, which you can't do without this compression. So once you've got the compressed footage, you can then take it into a manipulation package, for example, image-based lighting, uh, we'll see just now, for post-production, adding in computer graphic imagery, etc. So image-based lighting is a, a rendering technique. Uh, rendering is the process of simulating lighting uh, using software uh, packages. Uh, so image-based lighting gives us the, the f ability of, uh, when, once we've captured the high dynamic range lighting uh, with the camera such as the, the one next to me, uh, we can then put it in a piece of software such as a renderer and use that lighting to light uh, virtual objects as if they were in the environment in which the original light was captured. So this is a demonstration of uh, a dynamic image-based lighting that we've prepared earlier. Uh, it shows a virtual car, which was uh, done in software, being rendered with lighting captured from the camera. Uh, the lighting is placed all around the, the object, as such the object is within the sphere of the lighting. Uh, we can see the uh, false color of the lighting, which shows the different luminances, which cannot actually be displayed on this monitor. Also, we can see different exposures, which highlight different aspects of the, of the lighting. The lighting can be done dynamically. Uh, as you can see, the camera can move, the, any object can move, and the camera allows us to light the virtual object from any angle. So this camera gives us the ability of doing things much, much faster. As I said before, this, the original cameras, the static cameras, would take between five to 10 minutes. Now we're doing uh, 24 frames per second. So this gives us incredible opportunities of doing things we couldn't do before, like having moving clouds, uh, showing off explosions, and uh, lots of dynamic uh, environments. And it's, it's cutting edge technology. It's the only camera of its type in the world, and it gives us the opportunity of doing certain things that no one else can do. So this is the final stage of the problem. This is the HDR displays. And what we have on, on over there is a standard LCD, top of the range LCD monitor. And behind me here we have a high dynamic range monitor. Uh, and the difference between the two is that a high dynamic range monitor is not just an LCD panel, but behind it is an LED panel. 
and it's a projection of the LED panels through the LCD, which is giving you this extra information, extra lighting. On the LCD, you get a lot of information, but you still lose information, particularly in the clouds. And you can see here, we have a lot, all the information captured, the real-world lighting, which your eye would see, whereas on the LCD version, you simply can't, you can't get that. And what we're actually showing on the LCD version is not a single exposure, but it's the HDR content is compressed in such a way we get the best possible quality. But even so, we still can't give you everything that you need to see the real world. I mean, the question is who would use it? And this, the answer seems to be certainly television companies, certainly Hollywood. And one thing we're exploring is see whether this idea of capturing full extreme of light within a certain circumstances is of value to people undertaking training to be surgeons. So capture the light when operation. So you'll be able to see not only where the light is shining on a particular part of the body being operated on, but what's going on around you. A fourth arguable application is in terms of creating better simulators for security and for training and for understanding. Potentially the market is very, very big. I think we have a unique opportunity, a world first opportunity in WMG to do this. We have you know, the top of the range, probably the best camera in the world to do this with. So I'm very excited about the possibilities that we, you know, how we can take this research forward because we've got access to this technology.